А наша мобильная студия Хабра Хабр продолжает общаться со спикерами а, главного мероприятия российской разработки. Меня зовут Анна Трунина, и а, у меня в гостях а, Брюс Мамджейн. Главный, идеологи... главный идеолог международного сообщества Postgres SQL. So, Bruce, uh, hi. Um, you uh, come to our conference, uh, High Load uh, Plus Plus, every year. Uh, and uh, this year you have talked about upcoming PostgreSQL features. And um, could you please tell some details about particular um, qualities of uh, PostgreSQL community in Russia? Of course, um, I've been uh, we've I've been involved with uh, with the Russian developer community in Postgres. Gee, it must be 15 years now. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I live in the United States, so all that was via email, uh, but. Very early on, it was clear that the Russian developers were incredibly intense and very capable. Uh, mm -hmm. They had a skill of solving problems that mm -hmm. was rare in the world. Uh, so I believe you uh, you interviewed Oleg Bartunov mm -hmm. yesterday, and he's one of the team that we I had worked with yeah. from way back. Uh, and and you know we've been really blessed to have the Russians. Uh, involved in the global team of development that we've had. They've done full text search, they've done some JSON work, they've done a lot of very sophisticated indexing work, uh, and, and you know, we've been just, Postgres would not be what it is today without the, the sort of internal server developers that we've had in, in Russia for many years. Is this younger than the international community, PostgreSQL? Um, so, uh, I've been with Postgres for 20 years. Yeah. Uh, I think Oleg goes back to about 21 or 22, so he actually precedes me. Uh, I would say up until about five years ago, most of our activity in Russia was in terms of server development, mm -hmm. so internals work. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a great user base, mm -hmm. but in the past five years, Postgres has become very popular mm -hmm. among uh, companies and, uh, and users and, mm -hmm. and developers in Russia. Mm -hmm. And that's been probably the big change, is that we always had great developers here, now we have a, a very large user t community as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how Russian experience in PostgreSQL uh, differ from the international uh, experience in this technology? Right, so um, obviously being with Postgres 20 years, we started all very small, you know. Um, uh, I was a volunteer for the first three years and, and we probably had a couple hundred users or maybe a couple thousand users in those early years. Uh, but fortunately, we always had sort of a strong community in Japan and, and frankly, Western Europe. Those were our strong points. Uh, and then in the past 10 or 12 years, uh, North America, Latin America have, have sort of risen uh, very consistently, but not, not, not huge, but they, every year they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And now we have many large corporations uh, mm -hmm. in the United States who were, and around the world who were, who mm -hmm. were really standardized in Postgres. The big chain difference in Russia is that we had a very small user base. As, it, as Postgres was growing throughout the whole world, years ago, maybe five, six years ago, Postgres was still kind of small in terms of adoption. And then like two or three years ago, it went like that. And it's certainly growing faster now here mm -hmm. than pretty much anywhere else. So you start out slow, but it went, went up very quickly. And talking, talking in general, uh, what challenges is, pay, is facing Postgres SQL uh, today? Yeah, you know, I've always, as, as one of the core team members, it's always my job to kind of look for threats, like where are we going to have problems down the road, you know? And, uh, you know, fortunately we don't, we don't really have many. We had years ago, obviously, funding was a problem, finding developers was a problem. Uh, as we got bigger and bigger, the problems got harder and harder. So obviously we needed more dedicated people. You couldn't do it on your weekend anymore. You had to actually, in many times, have a full-time job that allowed you to pour mm -hmm. weeks or months into a specific feature. Mm -hmm. uh, but the good news is that thanks to my company, Enterprise DB, uh, OpenSCG in the US, and Postgres Pro, and Postgres Consulting, and Second Quadrant, and a lot of them in Japan as well, and Latin America, uh, and Europe, 
Uh, we have consistent funding for our developers. Uh, we, we, if, I look, if I chart the number of features we add in every release, it's probably about 220 to 230 features every, mm -hmm. every release. Release happens every year, mm -hmm. uh, and the pace of, it, of advancement is very consistent. So I don't really see any dark, uh, there have been times I've seen dark clouds on the horizon, but I don't really see any anymore. Mm -hmm. um, is it important to use uh, PostgreSQL uh, among databases? I'm sorry? Uh, is it important to use PostgreSQL among databases, data centers? Right, so um, when we started out with Postgres, uh, obviously, stability and reliability was one of the big concerns. This is 20 years ago. Uh, then we moved into a period where we were adding SQL language features and standardization. Then we spent about 10 years adding enterprise features that matched what other databases had. I think the reason Postgres use is important now is we're entering a phase where Postgres is doing things and has features that no other database has. And I think that's going to be the uh, that's going to be a the, the aspect that's going to take Postgres to the next level of adoption because when you operate just like Oracle or Microsoft or DB2, mm -hmm. you're just kind of one of many. Mm -hmm. But we're really entering a phase now um, with a lot of the very cutting edge features that we do things no one else does, and therefore. Postgres becomes a very powerful data platform mm -hmm. that people have to use mm -hmm. because they, that's the only place they can get the kind of functionality that you need for the 21st century in, in data uh, management. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what's the main um, philosophy and uh, the main advantage of PostgreSQL uh, in uh, today's technology world? Well, Postgres originally, when it was developed um, at a university, uh, was developed as sort of the next generation of data management. Uh, and particularly the, the ability to extend Postgres, to add new things to it, was something that was always very easy to do. And this is actually very hard in traditional databases like Oracle or DB2. It's kind of static, and if you want to add things, you have to do a whole lot of re-engineering. Postgres was designed originally to be extendable, mm -hmm. and if we look at some of the uh, features that we added, like you know JSON support and 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 so the foreign data wrappers and and, and different different server side languages, a lot of the things that we've been adding that make Postgres distinct really revolve around that extendability. Mm -hmm. And when I talk about Postgres doing things that other databases don't, like GIS, which is a a way of, of mapping the globe inside of a database. Uh, these are things that really are built around that extendable uh, mm -hmm. capability of Postgres. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, uh, could you say some words about uh, the developing of this technology in the future? Yeah, so uh, we just we came out with the 9.6 release uh, in September this year. Mm -hmm. So we assume the next release will be September next year because we're mm -hmm. on a year schedule. So every year, every is year you get one release. Yeah. So every year you get 220 features new. Oh, yeah. Um, so the, the next release will actually be called Postgres 10 because we 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 were using three numbers and now we're going to two to simplify things. Um, so there's no. So if I look at what we're what we're kind of shooting at now, um, I think we're partially looking at going to the very high-end workloads, mm -hmm. uh, cases where you have massive machines, uh, where Postgres is, is just, I would say, just reaching the top mm -hmm. of, uh, of, of performance that other, day, other commercial databases have had. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the extensibility is going to continue. We're going to be looking at multiple uh, Postgres servers working together. Mm -hmm. So people's data volumes are somehow often getting so large mm -hmm. that they won't fit on a single machine. The idea of taking dozens of Postgres servers and having them work in a coordinated way, mm -hmm. I think is a, a new technology we're going to be working on. Um, obviously, we're going to continue to improve performance and make it easier to administer and, and you know, the, the, the bread and butter things that we've been doing every year. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the interesting things actually is that because Postgres is distributed, the development has happened from so many different companies and so many different geographies that uh, we're able to work, we're able to add things, many things at the same time. Normally if you have a commercial database, 
you really can only add one direction at a time because your company can't really run in three or four directions. But because we're so many people uh, and you look at the feature set, you're adding so many different things every year uh, that it's really, you know, it's kind of scary what it's going to look like in 10 years. It just keeps getting, you know, bigger. We're 10 years in, 20 years in for me. Uh, the code itself is 30 years old. So, uh, you know, what's another 20 or 30 years going to look like? We really don't know. Um, but if you look, if you look at the trajectory, look at the statistics, and you look at how often the releases happen, how many lines of code change in every year, how many new features are added every year, the, it's a very, very consistent growth pattern. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, how do you find uh, the conference Hilux++ Plus Plus, uh, of this year? Yeah, so this is the first, uh, we were at the Crocus uh, Center last year. This is the first time I've been here. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a really big facility. Uh, obviously beautiful from the outside. Here in Skolkovo. Yeah, 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 in Skolkovo, right. So it's beautiful from the outside. Yeah. Um, the, the, the facility is, is massive. I mean, very easy to get lost mm -hmm. because of the way it's laid out. Uh, but, you know, I thought, the, I thought the Crocus facility was great. I think this one's even better. Um, it, it, the Crocus facility was sort of one massive hall. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you basically took this massive hall and you broke it up into pieces mm -hmm. uh, in separate rooms. Mm -hmm. This facility, because of the way it's laid out, is like little pods that kind of interact with each other in ways that I wouldn't have anticipated. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, uh, I like it. I'm, hope, I'm hoping we'll be back next year. Mm -hmm. uh, so thank you so much for this interview. Напомню, с нами был Брюс Мамжейн, главный идеолог технологии PostgreSQL.